Hi everybody and welcome to another video. In this video I'm going to be talking about my overclock of the RAM on ASRock Desk Mini X300. Before that let me apologize already in case you guys can hear some noise on the background because there is some construction outside and some people and kids playing about so apologies for that. Uh, let's start then with uh, as soon as you boot into the BIOS if you are using the same RAM as me the crucial ballistic the 3200 megahertz you will present yourself with this it will show 2400 megahertz and not the 3200 megahertz this is because it is a laptop RAM so you need to make the changes to get the standard that is supposed to be which is the 3200 megahertz to do that you need to come to the DRAM settings or configuration to do that but first let me just show you how it looks like so on a loading XMP settings you'll see that is auto on a DRAM frequency you'll see that is 2400 megahertz as I said and is on auto Infinity Fabric is also auto, but this one I'm not going to touch it. I'm just going to overclock the RAM to the frequency that I want to without changing the cache latency. That's the good thing about the crucial ballistic is even if I overclock, it will not change my cache latency because normally some of the RAMs, when you overclock, the cache latency goes up, which is what you don't want to. You want to increase the frequency, maintaining the cache latency at the same frequency. And next it will be the DRAM voltage. What I will do, it will do that automatically. But at the moment, as you guys can see, it's at 1.20 volts. When I overclock, into the normal standard which is the 3200 megahertz it will increase to 1.35 volts and the reason for that is because if you increase the frequency you need power to balance that frequency if you don't have that power or that option normally what will happen is you will see that the system is gonna starting to behave strangely and sometimes even crash because you increase the frequency but it doesn't have enough power to compensate for that so that is another reason why I went for the crucial instead of the others because you'll see quite a few of them the frequency um, sorry the voltage is 1.20 volts which is not really much when you're doing a high overclocking with the crucial it gives you the option there are a few available that allow you to do that but most of them it allows you to increase the frequency but not the voltage and those ones are the ones that you can increase the frequency but not too much like I can do with this one now let's start then I'm going to download XMP settings and as you can see let me close again it's on auto as I said before I'm going to the XMP profile and I just click it as soon as I do that you will see that it already changed the frequency but it didn't change here the reason it didn't change here is because even if I go like that it's not going to change I need to reboot okay and as you can see on a voltage it already changed itself because since I'm going to use a 3200 megahertz I need more power so the system itself recognizes that I need that so it automatically does that okay so far so good I hope so <laughs> now can I increase more yes how much well 
I did some testing for a few months and I went from the 32 to the 34 up to the 36. I heard some people they can go to 3800 megahertz, but I don't think so. That is wise because you don't need to go that high and it can cause a lot of heating due to the frequency and it may fail and may crash the system and so on so i advise you not to do that but at 3600 it does the job and what well, i've been doing for a few months now and no crashing no nothing no issues whatsoever because it is a RAM for gaming, you will see that the frequency that it gives you is quite higher compared to the normal standard. As you see, 1600 MHz. It doesn't mean that you can use that high frequency because it all, uh, it all depends on a motherboard because the motherboard dictates how much you can go. For instance, the ASRock Desk Mini X300 it says 3200 but that doesn't mean that you cannot go over that limit because that is the standard that is given to you that is the safest and you're not gonna have no issues whatsoever but at 34 it also happens that it doesn't have no issues whatsoever and also at 3600 megahertz it also happens the same thing I never try and I will not test at 3800 so don't ask me because I don't see no point to go that way so I will go to the 3600 and I click it so now my RAM frequency is going to be at 3600 megahertz I will not make no changes on an infinity fabric because I don't have no need for that but in case you have a RAM with a, a very high like let's say 19 20 22 of the cache latency you can use the um, infinity fabric to compensate to reduce that latency but that i cannot really explain to you or go back and forth and try to explain because my cache latency is quite good it's quite low and uh, i don't have no need for that but you can go here and then you choose the frequency that you want to do that to balance your, your RAM. In my case, that's it in regards to the RAM, the overclock, because that's all I want and that's all I need. I'm going to reboot just to show you guys again that yes, it happened and it is 3600 megahertz but before that let me go to advance which is another tweak that i did and the reason for that is because i want to put two gigabytes on a gpu the reason for that is like this normally it, it comes on auto but it doesn't mean that you will compensate when you're trying to do any type of graphics or even playing some games, light games. In this case, I'm not, I'm not talking heavy games, but if you want to do those heavy games, I advise you to go not with the 16 gigs, but with the 32 gigs. And the reason for that is I would advise you to put 8 gigs just for the GPU. Or even more if you want to in my case i don't do gaming and all that so i i'm just concerned about when i do some graphic stuff and i need those gigs let's say two gigs to balance the system so it doesn't freeze or it just stops all of a sudden and then crash the application so to avoid all of that especially when you do something important and you don't want to lose it and then all of a sudden you well the system crash because the application stop and so on so i put two gigs exclusive for the gg um, for the gpu so in this case the gpu you it can run freely 
with the two gigs, it will reduce my capability of the RAM. So if it was 16, now it has 14. But then you also have to think about the cache and the other applications. But 14 is good enough for the whole system. And that's it for what I did with the RAM on my operation system. I hope it helped you guys understand a little bit more about that. I'm going to reboot, but I don't know if my computer will be able to record that because unfortunately it's not a powerful laptop. It's an i3 um, an i Intel, which is rubbish to be honest, but well, that's what I have. <laughs> yeah, so next to we just go to the exit and because I made all the changes that I want to and everything is fine. I don't have no reasons to change anything else. I'll go and save. Yes. And it's going to reboot. Now I'm going to try to see if I can show you the BIOS again, but I don't know if it's going to show up. Okay, let's see now it doesn't show up see this this video card is rubbish I do apologize but it looks like it's not gonna show so what I will do is I'm gonna stop the video here and then I'm gonna have to reset again this